Okay, last example here, number three, it says, what are the dimensions, or what dimensions will produce the least expensive one liter can? So we're talking about a cylinder here, a can. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this as the radius. So that's the radius. And remember, one, a one liter can, one liter is the same as a thousand milliliters or a thousand cubic centimeters. So we're going to work in cubic centimeters. And there's the volume formula for a can, a cylinder. Uh, volume is pi r squared h. Now we're trying to find the, what dimensions produce the least expensive Least expensive means, the, in this context, the smallest surface area. We need the volume formula because the volume has to be exactly a thousand, a one liter can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thousand in place of the volume and I'm going to solve for h. So if I divide both sides by pi r squared, this divides out on the right here and we get h equals a thousand over pi r squared. So for this one liter can, the height is a thousand minus, sorry, a thousand divided by pi r squared. So here's the surface area formula for a cylinder. It's two pi r h plus two pi r squared. That's the two circles in the end. This is the lat what's called the lateral surface area, the surface area around here. Now, the way it's written here, it's written in terms of two different variables, r and h. And so that's why I wanted to solve for h here, so I could substitute this 1,000 over pi r squared in place of h and get a surface area formula that just has one variable, just has r in it. So in place of h, I'm putting the 1,000 over pi r squared. And this simplifies com considerably. 2 times 1,000 is 2,000. The pi's divide out. And then um, uh, I have an r over r squared. So the r on top here has an exponent of 1 and it's over an r squared. So remember you subtract the exponent. So if I take this 1 and subtract 2 from it, that's where the negative 1 comes from. If you wanted to, I suppose you could write over r here, but I want to write it as a power so when I differentiate I can just use the power rule. Uh, plus, of course, the 2 pi r squared in the end. That's already uh, in terms of just r. So now I want the smallest surface area to be the cheapest can. So that's why I'm differentiating the surface area and I will set it equal to zero. The derivative of 2000 r is negative one. Uh, we use the power rule, so negative one comes down in front. So this would be negative one times 2000 is negative 2000. Subtract one from the exponent. So uh, negative one subtract one is negative two. Uh, two times, uh, the two comes down in front and multiplies by the two pi to give four pi. And then uh, two minus one would just be one here. And so we'll set that equal to zero our derivative for the surface area. Now when we set it equal to zero, that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm bringing the r to negative 2 down on, on the bottom. And I want to solve for r. So notice that uh, both of these numbers divide evenly by 4. And that's what I just did. I divided this by 4, so I could write a 1 here, I suppose. Uh, negative 2,000 divided by 4 is negative 500. So I have negative 500 over r squared plus pi r equals 0. And I'm, gonna, I'm uh, trying to solve for r here. So what I'm doing here is I took the negative 500 over r squared just over to the other side. So that's why this pi r equals the, the uh, now of course when you take it over, remember the sign change, that's why it's 500 over r squared on the right. And then the next thing I'll do is I'm going to do a little rearranging. Uh, I'm going to multiply these together. This is really cross multiplying. So r squared times r, that's where the r cubed comes from. But I'm also dividing out the pi. So that's why the pi is gone here and we have 500 over pi here. Uh, some people would do this probably with another step. If you actually just multiply that together you get pi r cubed equals 500 and then divide out the pi so they divide out, see so r cubed equals 500 over pi. So r cubed equals that, so to find r I would take the cube root of 500 over pi. So that's the value for r. So if you do 500 divided by pi and then take the cube root, you get r to be about 5.42. Now it says what dimensions, so you really need to find the height as well. So we take that 5.42 
and go over here. This is the most convenient place to find the height. So put 5.42 in place of r, square it, multiply by pi, divide into a thousand, and you find that the height is 10.84. Notice that the height is exactly double the radius. That's not a coincidence. That actually is is what happens here. The height is double the radius. So the best dimensions are a radius of 5.42 centimeters and a height of 10.84 centimeters.